The process between process between two parallel current carrying wires. Okay, and then we'll learn the definition of the ampere. Definition of ampere from that particular section. Okay. So as I was saying, that when we have current carrying wire, what we have learned in the previous sections that if we have a current carrying wire, okay, if we have a current carrying wire, it creates a magnetic field around it. It creates a magnetic field around it. So suppose I have a current carrying wire like this. So it will create a magnetic field around it. Okay, like this. Concentric circles like this. So and we have seen that if I have a conducting wire, if I have a conducting wire passing through a region where there is uniform magnetic field. Then what will happen? Suppose this is another wire which is passing through a region where there is magnetic field. In this cross, science actually tells you that the magnetic field is into the plane of the paper. Okay, and suppose the wire is just. Uh, in the horizontal plane. Then what happens, you know, this current carrying wire will experience a force due to this magnetic field. This current carrying wire will experience a force due to this magnetic field. This is due to, you know, like, so what do you mean by current? Current is nothing but rate of flow of charge. Okay, rate of flow of charge. And we have already learned that if a charged particle is moving through a magnetic field, moving through a region where there is magnetic field V suppose, and if the charged particle is moving with certain velocity V, we have seen that the magnetic force on the charged particle will be Q into V cross D. So this we have learned already. You might be thinking. Why I'm talking about this thing here? Because see, the current carrying wire has plenty of charges. Okay, plenty of charges, and these are moving charges. Okay, moving charges, plenty of moving charges. Okay, so this current carrying conductor has plenty of moving charges, and since moving charges experience a force. The whole wire, conducting wire, when it is carrying a current, suppose some current I, and the magnetic field is V, then you know if the length of the whole current is L, the magnetic force on that current carrying conductor will be, the force on that conductor will be I L cross V. I L cross V. So this we have already learned in the previous section of previous discussion. So if we can go back and see, so we have learned in this. So if this, if this, this is the length of the wire is L, L cross B, I L cross B. So this is the force the current carrying wire will, a conducting wire will experience when it carry when it carries the current I, and if the length of the Conducting wire is L. Okay, so now what we will see since current carrying wire experiences a force when it is passing through a region of uniform magnetic field, then see if I have there are, see if I have two parallel wires, as I can show you there in this figure, there are two conducting wires, one is A, another one is B. 
that is the from the OR A, it is at D distance away. You can see that. So this is D distance away because they are separated by the distance D. Okay. We have to see what is that magnetic field and what is the direction of the magnetic field there. So as you know, you have to use your top right hand thumb rule. So this is the right hand thumb rule, how to know the direction of the magnetic field. And what is the magnitude? First of all, let us see what is the magnitude of the magnetic field due to current IA at a distance D. Okay. So this you can do by use of ampere circuit and law. So you can find out the magnitude of the magnetic field by, by using ampere circuit and law that we have discussed last two classes. Ampere circuit and law. So what does that say? That say closed line integral without DL. This is a dot product. This is called mu naught I enclosed or passing through the amperial load. Okay, so in this case, look here, B and D, B and DL, as I said in the earlier classes also. So this is actually, you have to take the tangential component, suppose this is zero. This you can take as long OR, okay? Long OR, as we have done in the late, uh, last class for a long OR, how do you use ampere particle law? This is the whole current IA okay, flowing through the wire. Okay. And you have to find out magnetic field due to this current at a distance D. This is the distance D. Okay. This is D distance here. So I am just uh, considering a circular ampere loop. Okay. Ampere, ampere loop which is of radius d okay and you have to take suppose a small element of d sorry this uh ampere and loop and the direction of loop is this way and also magnetic field you have to take the tangential component so which is at the same direction okay dl and magnetic field they are the same direction so this dot product will give you b dl and B is constant over the circular loop. So you have to do integration over this DL and R. And what is this new uh, this R enclosed that is nothing but IA here. So this is what is that? This much. This is actually this is actually the perimeter. <laughs> integration of DL is the perimeter, which is 2 pi D here. Okay. 2 pi d is integration of dl here, integration of dl. So from here, then what we get is b mu 0 i a by 2 pi into b. I'll just, I'll just write this at some corner because I have to use this space. Okay. So I have got the magnetic field created by the current carrying wire a. Exactly on the wire B, exactly on the wire B, which is at a D distance away. How do we get that? Just by applying ampere circuit law. So I have got the magnetic field over here. See, this is a BA. Suppose BA, this is magnetic field created by. Magnetic field created by the current carrying wire A on this wire or in the resident where the wire is. Okay. Now, suppose I consider. So, you can see that this wire B is in the magnetic field created by the wire A. Now, what is the direction of the magnetic field due to this current IA? It is in the direction C, just exactly into the plane of the paper. If you use this right hand thumb rule, you can easily find out. So, this is here, it will be like this, okay? So, it is going into the plane of the paper, okay? Into the plane of the paper. So, that's why it has been taken 
down one. You look here. Magnetic field created by created by A on this wire B is this one, which is taken down one to the plane of the paper. Now I have learned that the magnetic force is actually I L cross B. If the length we consider for the conducting wire is A, and the magnetic field around that conducting wire is B, and the current carried carrying by the conducting wire are then that conducting wire will experience experience this amount of force. So let us see due to this B A how much force this uh, current carrying wire B is experiencing. So I will write. And what is the direction for that? So I am writing the force of B due to A. Okay. So let us calculate that. Uh, so I have to write the I B into suppose I can I consider this much amount of length of the wire, which is having length capital L. I will write this as vector. That means what? You have to take the direction of the current. In that direction, I am taking the element of the load, uh, wire, of length L and B. So now, if you apply that means left hand load, I think, uh, okay, I, I think I have forgotten to share that. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, Kevin's left hand rule you have to see. If you want to calculate this, either you can use the cross product. So L is in this direction, in this direction L and B is downward. So see, if you apply your right hand thumb rule, then you can easily see that the magnetic force is towards the A. So this force will be towards towards. If you are not able to demonstrate, you can tell me. Uh, I, I can tell you again. See, this is cross product. Okay. And first of all, these two are actually perpendicular to each other. Look, I have horizontal, A is horizontal, and B is vertically downward. So if you use your cross product, that is the for the cross product. So you get the direction of the force HBA, that means the force on B. And conducting wire B due to the wire A. So that will be towards, towards A. And what is the magnitude of the force then? And since these two are perpendicular to each other, so we'll assign 90 degree will give you 1. I can write this as IB. And this is BA, obviously. So this is L and BA. So I know what is BA. So see, I'll write mu naught. I A into I B divided by 2 pi D and this is L. So this is the ma magnitude of the force and what is the direction of the force? That is towards, so this is the direction towards, towards A. The force will be towards A. This is A, B A. Okay, this direction. So if I draw here, this will be this direction. FBA. So similarly, what you can do, so I'll write down this magnitude of the force, and we have seen the direction of the force. I'll clean everything. Let us see. We'll see what is the force experienced by the conducting wire A due to the B. I'll write down this force somewhere here. So the FBA will be okay. I'll write the magnitude. I know the direction now. IA, IB into capital L divided by 2 pi D. So this was the force. Now what we'll see, we'll see the magnetic field created by this B or B or the current IB on this somewhere here. Okay, so this is also a D distance array. Similar fashion, I can use the amplitude circle law to calculate the magnetic field B. Okay, let us see the magnitude first. So it will be mu naught IB by 2 pi D again. 
Okay. And what is the direction then? We have magnetic field, direction of magnetic field here. So current is going in this way. Look, I can use the thumb tool. So you look, you look that that the magnetic field around this wire, this will be actually coming out of the plane of the paper, coming out of the plane of the paper. Okay. So this will be in this direction. Okay. It will be coming out of the plane of the paper. So kind of this direction like this. Okay. Coming out of the plane of the paper. So this is the D. Magnetic field created by uh, IP current or the current con uh, conductor B on this wire A. Now you have you have to make this suppose I consider similarly length element of L, okay, length element of L of the conducting wire A. Okay, this is suppose L on which I have to calculate the main field and the direction of the L is this way and this is your B. So if you apply now your uh, right hand thumb rule in this case, right hand thumb rule L cross B. Okay. L cross B. I think so this drawing you have to little bit a uh, be careful. So you can use that the right, the right hand thumb rule also. Okay, so it is actually you have to think this as think as upward, okay, and this L as on the horizontal plane. Okay, so A is on the horizontal plane, and this B is this way, okay, upward. Okay, so then you will look that your force is. Force is towards this conducting wire B. Force will be towards B. Okay. The force will be towards B this way. Okay. If this is your B, B, and this is your L, this is actually upward. Upward. And you can find out the direction of the current due to uh, magnetic field due to this wire and the current. Use the thumb rule. Okay. If you just sit with a quiet mind and read and uh, uh, try to demonstrate this uh, uh, various rules like thumb rule or the thumb rule for the cross product, etc., then you will be able to find out this. This is the force on A due to B, which will be acting towards the B. So I can write then the force on the A, which is actually F A due to B and this will be uh, mu naught because this is B I L cross B again this B and L they are perpendicular to each other. See in the similar fashion what I will get is this B I I is this one okay I A I L is L and this is 2 pi D sorry this is again L so I L cross B that is what I am doing if I write I L cross B I A L cross B B okay B B sorry B B yeah this is B B so that is the force here I L cross B B this is force on the conducting wire A due to B so this is what I am writing here okay and if I simplify or write in a similar fashion as I have written for the previous one. So you can see this the magnitude of the force for both of them are the same. You look here, I just so see mu naught i a b and l in the numerator denominator, denominator you have 2 pi d. So these are same. So what we have got is actually you feel a force. Like they will actually see this is the force on B due to A, and the same magnitude of the force will be experienced by this A in the opposite direction. Yes, 
A, B. That means you know, like they are just pulling each other. They are pulling each other or attracting each other. So if I write F, A, B, it will be minus of A, B, A. So this is kind of like uh, Newton's third law is satisfied here. Okay. Newton's third law equal and opposite forces. Okay. They will attract by attract each other when the current is parallel to or in the same direction. These are parallel current carrying away, but the current is in the same direction. Then both the wire will attract each other with the equal and opposite force. Okay. Equal and opposite force. Okay. Now what happens if the current is different? Okay. Current is different in direction. Then what will happen, you know? You can just demonstrate by yourself itself. So in that case, you know, like I'll just give you a flavor of that. Just look here. What is that? Suppose the current IB is flowing in this. Okay, current IB is flowing in this way. If the current is flowing in this way, so what will happen? The magnetic field on this will be in the direction of this. Okay. Now this is the IL. So IL will be in this way. Okay. IL will be in this way. All right. So if the current uh, I will, this is L and this is B. So what will happen? You know the force will be this way. Now force on A B to B in this direction. Okay, in this direction. And at the same time, if you just do for the other one, suppose the magnetic field created by this A on this will be. Suppose the current is in this direction itself. So they are opposite in direction now. The magnetic field BA is this, this direction that is all that in this direction. But now this, this is also in okay. So I what is L I have to consider? L in this I have to consider in this way. So look this. What will happen in this case? The magnetic force on this will be this way. Okay. A. A B. So they are pulling each other, pushing each other. So this is this is the force on A due to B, and this is the force on sorry B due to A. Okay. So they will be pushing each other. You just simply sit quietly and start to demonstrate your thumb rule and uh, rule for the cross product, etc. To find out the direction of B, find out the direction of L, then you find out the Process, then you will easily be able to understand that when the magnetic forces are anti parallel, that means the force, uh, sorry, magnetic, sorry, currents are anti parallel to each other, or in opposite direction, in a parallel wire, they will be opposing each other. So, yeah, so then we get two results if current, if current. In the same direction. Same direction. The conductors will attract each other. Attract each other. Okay. Then, if the current is current, current are opposite to each other, Then the conductor ripples each other. So these two ripples. Okay. These two we have learned now. Okay. So see, there can be question. Okay. This was actually we have seen the current 
Uh, so the force, magnitude of the force we have got, mu naught I A, I B, L by 2 pi B. Okay. If the force per unit length, if you are asked to calculate the force per unit length, then it will be simply this. I A, I B by 2 pi D. If the forces are equal in, sorry, currents are equal in magnitude, then simply may not I square by 2 pi D. Okay. So this kind of, so this, uh, there can be a derivation from this particular uh, portion. Or maybe numerical examples, numerical problems can be also there in the uh, exam. So we have to derive this. Uh, remember this thing. So see, from here, they can ask you to derive the forces, force uh, between the wire, and they can ask you to uh, define ampere, the unit of current. Okay, define the SI unit of current. SI unit of current is ampere, right? So that you have to define from here. See, we can easily define this. So suppose that the, there are two conductors, right? So if the current, see this is this is the current. I have to find out the uh, I have to find out the unit for that. So this is force. So you can define like this. So suppose this is uh, some current I okay I square means some current I and this is see, this is the force, and suppose this D is one meter, force F is one newton, force per unit length newton per meter, suppose newton per meter. Okay. Okay, so if the two wires are actually kept in one meter away, two parallel wires are kept in one meter away, then the amount of current point it is flowing through both of them flowing through both of them i i suppose i i okay flowing through both of them will produce a force between them how much force this much force okay so how much force it is so many zero means force by into 10 to the power 7 so it will create how much force it will create uh the force, so this is not one meter per meter, so I just have to find out that force. So if they are kept in uh, one meter away from each other, the amount of the current when flows from for both the wires, it produces a force of how much? 2 into 10 to the power 7 newton per meter. Okay, per meter of length, of length of this wire. Then that amount of current current will be called as ampere. I'll just show you from your book. You have to actually uh, remember that. So this one, ampere is the value of that, value of that steady current which when maintained in each of two very long straight parallel conductors of negligible process in place one with an effect in the waveform. Would produce on each of each of these conductors the force of force equal to two into ten to the power minus seven newton per meter of length. So this is the definition of ampere from this particular force. Okay, this particular force. So if if you are asked to derive the force and then define the SI unit of current, then you have to write down this force per unit. And then you have to write this particular sentence so that you get the full marks. Okay. So then uh, we have covered this part. Then we'll just go to see each section will be actually helping us to learn the new sections. Okay. So here we have learned the force on a current carrying conductor or parallel conductors when those are carrying and obviously we have learned that the force we have calculated, how we calculated, we thought that one current 
on conductor is in the magnetic field created by the other one. And then we have written IL cross B or IL B because they are L and B are always perpendicular to each other in this case. Okay. Now what we'll do? Now we'll see that when we keep uh, a rectangular current cutting loop. So in this section we will be learning torque on current loop. Torque on current loop. So when the current cutting loop is placed in a magnetic field, uniform magnetic field. As we have learned in case of our electrostatic circle, we have learned that in case of electrostatic sort, we have learned if you have a uniform electric field like this, okay, and if you place a dipole at an angle like this, dipole electric dipole actually, suppose this is a negative, and this is positive charge, and they're separated by distance. 2D or something like that. Okay. So then this particular electric dipole will experience a torque because a couple of force will act on this. So one force in this direction. Okay. This is minus QE. And another force will be in this direction. See, these are two anti parallel forces. They are equal, equal in magnitude, but they are lack of action of force. Are not in the same line, line of action of force. Like, see, this is the line of force for this QV, and this is the line of action of force for the minus QV. They are not in the same line. That's why, you know, like there is no net force. First of all, there are two equal and opposite force acting on the both sides of the dipole, like in that So, there will be no net force. On the dipole, no net force. And, and since these two forces are equal and opposite, there will be then no motion, no linear motion. Linear motion. And these forces are called couple. These forces are called couple. Okay. Couple means a pair of forces acting on the same object. Okay, a pair of equal forces acting on the same object, but the lambda of action of the forces are not the same length. So what will happen, you know, they will create a torque. Torque means there will be a tendency of rotation. Sorry, this is, in this case, yes, it will, it will be in that direction. So there will be a tendency of rotation in this direction. There will be a tendency of rotation of the torque. Sorry, rotation of the dipole. So the torque actually denoted by now if you remember we have defined for electric field P cross E. P is the dipole moment, electric dipole moment, and E is the electric for uniform electric field, and this the cross product gives the torque on P E sin theta. Sin theta and the direction will be perpendicular to this P and E. So this is torque tau. So in this case also we see in case of in case of magnetic uh, field also if we keep if we keep a current carrying loop current carrying loop in a uniform magnetic field so, so here you look on a rectangular loop we are going to calculate the torque. I have got a rectangular loop over here. So here yeah, we have to discuss this. What we are discussing actually, the fourth one. See, this is the corollary of fourth on current carrying conductor. Corollary of this we are learning here. Conductor. When placed in uniform, uniform magnetic will be okay. 
and the conductor I have taken as a loop. Yeah, in this case we have taken as a loop, and the step of the loop is rectangular step. And see the pole on a current carrying conductor. This is the principle. This is the principle of actually the this force is called actually the this effect is called motor effect. The force so when you keep a current carrying conductor in a uniform magnetic field, it will experience the force, and that is called motor effect. This is called motor effect. Why this is called motor effect? Because using this principle, using this principle, motor works. Okay, motor works. Works. So the typical figure you can see here. This is a figure of motor. Okay, how motor works. So the typical motor, electric motor. Okay. Electric motor. What does it do? Electric motor. Actually, electric motor converts magnetic uh, magnetic electromagnetic energy. I can say or electric energy also. I can say convert electric energy into magnetical energy. Electrical electrical energy. What is the work or role of motor? Electric energy, energy gets converted to mechanical energy. Okay, mechanical energy. So this is the role of electric motor. So wherever there is a uh, function of rotation, something rotating something, there we will use motor. And see. Behind that working or motor, we have a principle which we are learning today. So that is the clock or the rectangular loop, current carrying loop, when it is placed in a uniform magnetic field, it will experience a torque and that torque will rotate the loop itself in a uniform magnetic field. It's about an axis passing through the middle. You can see that. So I can just tell you uh, this fact that see you you might have learned in your previous class also. So there are actually commutators, okay? Okay, okay. semicircular commutators. These are carbon brasses, carbon brass, brass, and this is this are commutators. What is next? Suppose I am going to wire. This is a battery. This two carbon brass. This is connected. Connected to this wire, you can see this loop connected to computer and computer is actually connected to the carbon brasses, which is then connected to the battery. That would flow the current through this loop. Okay. And what happens you now when there is a current carrying in this rectangular loop and is not going to be placed, placed this. Rectangular loop or this arrangement in a uniform magnetic field created by this electromagnet, which is denoted by north and south pole. So the magnetic field lines are here in the plane, in the plane of the loop. Loop is just lying in the magnetic field, so magnetic field, the plane of the magnetic field, sorry, plane of the loop, and the magnetic field is in the same direction. You can see here. You can see the magnetic field direction is this one. Yeah, not to south. Okay. Now I am just supposing that the current is flowing in the beginning, A to B, and then C to D, or the way through B to C, C to D, and D to D like that. Okay. Through this, obviously, through this battery circuit, this circuit. So when in the beginning, current is flowing in this direction, so we have seen when the current current went. It's placed in a uniform magnetic field. It will experience the force, and we have calculated the direction of the force. Direction of the force using this formula, I L cross B, L cross B, okay, L cross B, and when L and B are perpendicular to each other, in this case you can see that 
the magnitude direction is this way, current direction is this way. So L and B are perpendicular to each other. I can write I L B. The L is the length of the wire. In this case, yeah, so in this case, they have taken length of the wire as sorry, this is B. I am sorry. So this length they have taken as L, they have taken as B, and magnetic field is B. Okay. So the path, the force, magnitude of the force, let us calculate now on AB will be uh, I. This is A to B actually, AB. On the arm AB, I. B into B. This is the force, magnitude of the force. Applying what? I L cross B. This formula. I got the force. If I say that as F1, let us see the direction. See, you can just use this seventh left hand rule. In this case also, you can use the left hand rule, seventh left hand rule. See, if you are if you stretch your three fingers, one is thumb, another one is the index finger or the first finger, uh, yeah, index finger or fourth finger, and this is the middle finger. If you stretch them perpendicular to each other, suppose this is 90 degree, this is also 90 degree. So all of them are 90 degree to each other. Then you know if the current, if your middle finger is in the direction of the current, you just can demonstrate here. And the magnetic field is in the direction of the index finger. Okay, if your index finger is in the direction of the magnetic field, B. If your middle finger is in the direction of the current, then your thumb finger will give the direction of the force. And if you apply it here in this problem, you look the current, I see the force will be exactly downward like this. Okay, if I denote that force as F1, it is downward. Okay, so which and at the same time, if we apply for all the arms like B C A, C D A D B C anyway B C you will see the A and B they are parallel to each other. So no force on B C and A D. B C and A D. Will be zero because both the length and the wire is the magnetic field. Current direction and the magnetic field direction are parallel or anti parallel, then the force on the conducting wire will be zero. Okay, as it is practical. So, of course, only on this AP and CD will be existing due to this uniform magnetic field and the current. So, if you apply the force, see, it's leaving left hand door to find out the direction of the force on this. CD where first of all let me write down same current and the same length B. So same length B. So this also will be the same in magnitude. This is I L is B and this is B because current and magnetic field directions are perpendicular to each other. So I get I get 90 degrees, so 90 degrees is one. So this is the magnitude. And it is the force on this CD. What is the direction? If I apply Fleming's left hand rule, you will exactly find out that the direction of the force will be exactly upward. Okay, upward. If you see here, it is shown this here. Yeah. See, this is the F2. If I say force on this is FCD and this is FAB. So you can see that the force on this rectangular loop on the two opposite sides, okay, opposite sides, the force acting on both of them is actually magnitude wise they are equal, but the direction is opposite to each other. So they can form a couple, they can form a couple. Okay. So they can Form a couple, and you know how to find out the torque. Torque is actually one of the magnitude of one of the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the line of action. The like perpendicular distance between the line of action of the forces. So here it is actually if this is a by two, 
this is the axis of rotation. You have to take the axis of rotation in this case. So the force is like this in this way, and this way, this. So the force will try to see the couple of force will try to rotate this loop, rectangular loop in an anti-clockwise direction along the like about the axis passing through the middle. Passing through the middle, if I say this is PQ, this is a PQ about this axis, the loop, rectangular loop will try to rotate because of the torque. And see this torque actually can be found out by multiplying the perpendicular distance. This is uh, a by two plus another force. If you write it this way, a by two, or you can directly write f into a. A is the total length. Okay. So one of the force and perpendicular distance is in there. So in that way, or you can find out that. Moment of the force about the rotation axis, which is middle, exactly middle, PQ, middle of the, uh, yeah, middle of the breadth of the loop. Okay, so this is how in your book it is written. Both are correct. Okay, so finally you get get this one. So this is the torque, and here the torque again it is say from here you cannot understand because the the loop and the magnetic field have a, they are in the same plane, so you may not be able to understand that. Um, what is the better form of this? Okay, so but we can just get the magnitude of the torque. So F is I, B into B, and you would have got that A. So look here, R, A, B into B. So what is A into B for this rectangular loop? This is area of the so I can I can write that this dot as I into A into B is the magnetic field. Okay, and these two terms, like see multiplication of I into area, this is again denoted as dipole moment. Okay, sorry, the magnetic moment. Okay, just like your electric dipole moment, this is called actually magnetic moment. What is this called? Magnetic moment. I into A, current into area of the loop, magnetic moment. Magnetic moment, and it is denoted by small m. Okay, so this is denoted by small m, mb. In fact, this dipole moment, sorry, magnetic. Moment is also a vector just like electric dipole moment P. This is also vector. I'll tell you how to find out the direction of that. I think I have given here. Okay. See, if you have a current loop like this and current is anti clockwise direction, you can use your thumb rule. Thumb rule in the sense, you just thumb rule means actually right hand grip rule, I can say. Right hand grip rule. If you just grip the wire with your four finger. So as that the tip of the fingers are in the direction of the current, then your thumb goes in the direction of magnetic moment. There mu also sometimes written. Actually, broadly written as mu in your book, it is given as m. So this is the direction of m, like this. And in fact, you can say this is the area vector along the direction of the area vector. Along the direction. So magnetic moment is always along the direction of area vector. Direction of area vector. So what is the direction of area vector? Area vector is always directed outward normal to the area. This is the area. This is the outward normal in this direction. But obviously, if you use this right hand grip hold. This will give you surely the direction without any discrepancy. Okay. So what you have learned here, you have learned that if you keep a, if you keep a rectangular loop in a uniform magnetic field, it will experience a force. Obviously, the current also has to pass through the wire. 
it will experience the top and then top will try to rotate the low. Okay. And if you connect, see if you connect any machine with this rotating low, okay, so that machine or that wheel also will rotate with this. Okay. That's why it is called motor effect. So it is already 76. I think I will just uh it here and stop the discussion here today. Next day. We will learn this in detail what is motor effect and how it works. And see, here we have taken magnetic field, direction magnetic field, and the, the plane of the loop. But we will see when the magnetic field and the loop, the plane of the loop is making certain angle of theta. Then what happens? So, in, in that case, you know, the form will be. Not exactly I will be, I be, be. It will be something else. But the torque will be actually, this is the magnitude of the force. But if you just calculate the torque, torque will be force into the perpendicular distance, which will be actually A sine theta. Okay, A sine theta. In that case. So, so A is actually again, so A, A is this one. I B B. If you just Put it here, so you will get I into A into B, B sin theta. So it's this A B is A, so what you can write torque here as I into A B and sin theta. And if you want to write this as M, anyway, you know M, and this is B. And if you want to write in terms of Next time location, so you have to write since it is called sin theta coming over here, the torque will be given by m cross b, m cross b magnetic dipole moment in cross magnetic field. Okay, so this part is also there. So finally, what will get the torque on this? If you keep at the angle between C magnetic field. In this way, and the direction of the loop or area vector of your loop is in this direction, so we make it makes an angle theta. This will denote as m because your uh, area vector and m is in the same direction, that's why this is written like this. So, m cross b, so this is the top. Okay, so I'll stop it here. Next year, we'll just finish this and we'll uh, proceed further. So we'll be meeting on the Wednesday. So I think this is all for today. So if you have any question, you can ask me uh, on the next class regarding this or anything on this chapter. I mean, we have to. We have, I think I'll take another two classes of this chapter to finish this and discuss some of the questions over here. All right. Thank you for your patience. So. Yeah, so good night. And stop it, gentlemen.